let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the entire world. In the name and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Creator is now on earth. Everlasting Gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. John chapter 5, verse 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Second lesson, St. John chapter 12, verses 49 to 50. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Golden text, St. John chapter 6, verse 45. It is written in the prophets, And they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Quote, the glory of God is revealed. Beloved, this is the glory of God revealed in our in your midst for your benefit. This is in fulfillment of the scriptures that in the days ahead God would teach you everything. Today the Holy Spirit is in our midst teaching us all things. A righteous one was sought after in heaven and earth to open the seal and to teach everyone written words in the book of God but no one was ready to open the book it was for this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ openly declared that the Holy Spirit of truth would come and lead mankind to the accurate knowledge of truth it is believed by all that there is no righteous person on earth. God commissioned the prophets to come and teach human beings, but they, but when they arrived, they discovered that everyone derailed from the path of rectitude. Other sets of people went out, but they also found the world in that state of sinfulness. At the end of it all, he sent his only begotten son, who declared to the world, saying, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. St. John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. This is not the time to emulate your fellow man. Rather, it is time we all should follow the Holy Spirit who is in our midst. He had stated, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, 
know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Hebrews chapter 8 verses 10 to 11. That period mentioned in our pres is that pe that period mentioned is our present age. The Holy Spirit is now dwelling in us. He is our instructor, teacher, leader, and the doer of all things. So, do not allow anyone to make you derail from the path of rectitude. Rather, be led by the Holy Spirit in you. As the heaven is higher than the heart, so also is the wisdom of God much greater than man. At times, you will hear some church leaders asking their followers to praise what they to practice what they preach, but not what they themselves do. Some leaders advise their followers to refrain from eating the flesh, fornication, theft, falsehood, and so on. Yet, they are seriously indulging in those sins. Some of them advise their flock to forsake fornication, but at the same time they are committing the act. They would even term such an act as holy. For now, God trusts no one. Hence, the Holy Spirit decides to come personally into the world to dwell in each and everyone. Our Lord Jesus Christ was a leader taught by the Holy Spirit and for this reason he was able to bring salvation to us. Our main problem is contingent on the fact that we are following individuals and not abiding by whatever advice the Holy Spirit gives us. You have come into the kingdom today so that you should hear words from the horse's mouth. It is your failure to do most of the things he advises you to do that account for your inexplicable problems in life. If it were not for the fathers coming into this world at this end of time, the world would have perished. Whenever someone tells you something before you react, listen to the Spirit. By so doing, the Holy Spirit in you will discern whether the information is true or false. You will hear preaching, but the Holy Spirit in you will, will inform you that the word is not correct. At times, you may plan to do something and he tells you that plan is bad. Therefore, we have to abide by every piece of advice given us by the Holy Spirit at the expense of man's advice. He is the one who sees things within and beyond. The Holy Spirit does not only exist at 34 Amber Street, Calabar, but he is in the body of all his children wherever they are. He is our leader and teacher. Many that keep his teachings and instructions will he save. So, the only person you have to emulate is the Holy Spirit. You can find a person who was, through the help of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, discharged and acquitted in the law courts, returning to his former church. At the time, advises anyone who has problems to come to Brotherhood. You would also find such a person reviling and condemning Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. You need not look at such a person, rather you have to listen to the Holy Spirit in you and do all that He directs you to do. This is so because your salvation is contingent on His word. 
The Father commissioned the angels and the prophets to come and teach mankind and salvage them. Unfortunately, not until he sent his only son to die for the effective accomplishment of the task. Now, he has come by himself to dwell with human beings and lead them in the right way. The golden text of this sermon has explicated as explicitly stated that the Holy Spirit will teach people and those who will keep his teaching will follow him. We are really the luckiest of all generations. Had it not been for the love of God humbly accepting to dwell with us, we would all have perished. Therefore, you should follow and emulate no other person other than the Holy Spirit. His teachings are wholesome, worthy of emulation. If you are given a vision, for instance, all you need to do is to listen to the Holy Spirit in you. By so doing, he informs you if the vision is correct or incorrect. Stop doing things out of your volition as you have been doing in the days gone by. For God has now come to dwell with human beings on earth, though they do not know him. At times, you do say that your heart tells you not to tell lies, commit fornication, and indulge in the like sins. Note, however, that it is not your heart that so directs you, but the Holy Spirit of God in you. Christ was in the Spirit. He was the first person that God lived in. That is why He did everything according to the dictate of the Holy Spirit. Hence, He conquered. You are a witness to the fact that on different occasions our Lord Jesus Christ was asked to heal the sick. He would wait for a while to receive directive from the Holy Spirit on how to go about healing the sickness. Thereafter, he would either place his hands on the patient's head or take him by the hand or instruct him to take bath in a river depending on the Holy Spirit's directive. Christ did nothing out of his own volition. Therefore, it is imperative that you do nothing out of your volition. A great number of you do make mistakes by claiming that you are not being taught by anybody. If you are not being taught by anybody, how then do you have this wonderful knowledge? Always inform people that God is teaching you. When preaching to people, they must have the assurance that you only say what the Holy Spirit directs you to, notwithstanding the, re the reaction of the listener. There is a saying that an errant boy has never died for responding positive positively to his master's instruction. Here in the kingdom, it is the only one God existing that teaches all the people, choristers, pastors, students, Christ servants or children of God. You have but one God. Since it was destiny that he would come and lead humanity, he has in earnest come to accomplish the set task. If any person instructs you to fornicate or commit adultery with them and claims that the instructions are from God, no matter who the person is or the position they occupy in the kingdom, it is a woeful lie. God cannot and will not instruct anybody to indulge, to indulge in any sinful act. Also, make the person to be conscious of the fact that God cannot instruct anybody to indulge in sin. If a person tells you that God instructed him to tell you that you should embrace righteousness and be virtuous, you should keep to such 
instruction religiously because it is from God. In whatever fellowship or and group you find yourself, always abide by any instruction given which is from God, irrespective of the age, status, position, and educational attainment of the person. Here in this kingdom, no one has the authorization to do things out of their free volition. Nobody has right to flout what the gospel asks us to do. Instead, we should follow the Holy Spirit without resistance. Your problems emanate from the fact that you do not listen to the Holy Spirit in you. This is why you see most chairpersons, secretaries, and other executive members of different organizations in this kingdom not agreeing with one another. The reason is that when this person tries to listen to the spirit, the other listens to the flesh. Consequently, their decision became conflicting. I am telling you the veritable truth that brought out of the cross and star is not of this world, but from God. If sometimes, if someone from another church informs you of instruction they receive from God and continue to advise you to fast and celebrate a love feast, do exactly that, for it is from God. Never you shun advice by claiming that he is not a member of Brother of the Cross and Star. In the same vein, if a member of Presbyterian Church advises you that God says you should refrain from keeping the boyfriend you have been keeping, you will have to refrain from such an act because the instructions is from God. Crusaders are the soldiers of God. Many of you here long ago were asked to come here by the Father and you refused. So your coming here today is not the work of the flesh and blood, but it is the will of God. However, having come here, your problems have been solved. We are those who worship God in spirit and in truth. Many of you reject vision regarding it as false. That is why you become annoyed and regret ever going on a ministry work to another place if a vision directs you to do so. And you will remark that such vision is a false one. You will then go on to quote that the father has, has never been at the village square yet masquerade beats up his child at the same place. Nothing would harm you in this kingdom if you were obedient to the Father, yet it is your act of disobedience that deprives you of the Father's protection and blessing. It is advisable to be in the Spirit, and by so doing, we would not do what pleases the flesh. There is a saying that anyone who lives according to the dictate of the flesh shall die, while someone who lives according to the dictate of the spirit shall live forever. We do not have any business in segregating against non-members and embracing our members. Rather, we should love everybody equally. Your, your coming here this week depicts that you are all crusaders. You are all soldiers of God. You have all been commissioned by the Father to come into the kingdom this week. Before now, when the Father used to call you, you would resist the call into this kingdom and imbibe the gospel from the horse's mouth. 
you would attribute your inability to respond to the call to financial problem. It is high time you all come into the kingdom from all parts of the world to imbibe gospels from the horse's mouth. Believe fervently that by your coming to 34 Amber Street, Calabar, your testimonies are on the way and all your problems are no more. Here in the kingdom, there is no sickness, healthy, poor or rich, beautiful or ugly person, for we are all one in the Lord. Some of you lament that you do not hold any position of responsibility in this kingdom. I would love to ask you whether you are not brotherhood. Never allow such thought to disturb you. Instead, always listen to the Spirit and abide by the instructions He gives you. By so doing, you are all right. He is the Father who sends one on an errand and goes along to accomplish the task which by him he does everything so it is insignificant for you to claim that you are illiterate inexperienced wretched and so forth as such you cannot do anything he has even told you not to be anxious of what you would speak. When you are faced with any difficulty, the Holy Spirit will deliver you. It is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father in you. This is a proof that He is the one who does all things for us. God knows what is good and would always enjoin you to do only what is good. He knows that respecting the leaders is good. Hence, he admonishes you to be obedient to them. Therefore, if a person tells you that God says you should disobey your leader, you should discard such advice and make it clear to him that such advice does not come from God. Let no person stop you from being charitable to the needy, orphans, destitute, widows, and so forth. For it is God's instruction that such people should receive care. He has also enjoined you not to begrudge anyone or to be recalcitrant in your matrimonial homes. He has also enjoined us not to behave as if we were hopeless and comfortless, but to put everything into prayer. In addition, we have to practice the word of God as many that have received Baptism into this kingdom are the soldiers of God. Their assignment is to serve God every day of their lives. Read the first lesson again.